Hello everyone, I hope you're all keeping well, healthy and happy. So I was asked by a friend of mine recently to talk a little bit about the Barcelona Declaration. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the Barcelona Declaration was an agreement signed between EU member states and countries in the Mediterranean Basin. Now, many of these countries included states that were adopting an Islamist platform in terms of their own governance in their own countries. Countries like, for example, uh, Algeria, Cyprus, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Malta, Morocco, the Palestinian Authority, who don't actually have a country yet, uh, Syria, Tunisia, Turkey, the League of Arab States and the Arab Maghreb Union. The partnership was supposed to be based on a spirit of solidarity with these countries, as well as um, cultural exchanges. This formed the basis later on of free trade agreements and a greater laxity in terms of the free movement of people between these countries and the European Union. So you could argue that it formed the basis of what later became the migrant crisis when there was a large influx of people from many of these countries into Europe. Uh, but it's a, it's a difficult subject to broach because so many people within the European Union, within those countries, want to adopt an inclusive multicultural approach. Now, one of the things about this agreement that stands out, apart from all the uh, uh, facts of uh, trying to adopt these principles of the United Nations Charter and so forth, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and whatnot, uh, there are parts of this that are really, really concerning. So, for example, they talk about the importance of the role that the media can play in the reciprocal recognition and understanding of cultural of cultures. Cultural exchanges, knowledge of other languages, implementation of education and cultural programs, and the respect of cultural identities. Basically what that says there is that integration is not necessary in order to uh, be multicultural. So cultural assimilation doesn't come into play there at all. And the media was to play a role in getting that message across. And we have seen what that lack of um, integration, that lack of assimilation has led to. If people are allowed to keep their own cultures to an extended extent, then they will fail to integrate. You will get ghettoization, which is exactly what did in fact happen in the European Union. People fail to take on board the values and the, the freedoms that we hold dear in the West as a result of these ridiculous uh, ideals. The other problem is that not all cultures are the same, right? This uh, agreement assumed uh, a level playing field with regards to differing cultures within these Islamist countries. But this is simply not the case. There are many countries throughout the world, not just these ones, but there are many countries where, for example, female genital mutilation is deemed as an acceptable practice. This is incompatible with Western principles, we would say, right? It's incompatible. Our legal system doesn't even allow for us to incorporate that into it. And what has happened is that these advocates of uh, cultural... Um, acceptance, this cultural enrichment nonsense, this multiculturalism, have allowed for other cultures to supplant and supersede Western culture. And of course, West, Western culture was already going through uh, this destructive period because uh, people were abandoning it anyway due to cultural Marxism. And Therefore, they were easy targets. The EU was an easy target, right? 
you just take over a place, you take over a country if they don't have any underlying foundations uh, among the populace, that is, right? So because uh, the West ceased to take its history, its culture seriously, other cultures came in and supplanted them. This is, this is what took place. And the EU played a great role in this because of these sorts of agreements and declarations. Now, that doesn't mean that every person from those cultures is bad, right? Or that they hold those cultural values or norms. In fact, many of them are trying to escape those very cultures. But what the European Union did in drawing this declaration up is that it made it difficult for sensible people in those cultures to come out of those cultures and integrate into the West because if they were seen as not adopting their own cultures instead and instead adopted Western cultures, they were sort of seen as outcasts, right? And this is, this is just to do with the way that societies function, I think, generally. But this sort of strengthened cooperation, as it was termed, between the EU and these uh, countries, it's, it's, it's destroyed the underpinnings of what was society. Right. What, what, what is society comprised of? It's comprised of individuals who have shared history, who have shared traditions, who have shared cultural norms. By breaking all of that down and accepting this uh, level playing field scenario, this is very akin to the blank slate concept proposed by Rousseau, who was a postmodernist. Right. Uh, those ideas generate a lot of um, problems for damn near any society because you're assuming that the other culture values the same things you do you're automatically assuming that off the bat and that's not necessarily the case in many of these countries right some of them in fact most of them you can probably tell from the list that i read off are heavily inclined towards islamist attitudes Salafist attitudes that came out of Saudi Arabia, right? And so when you have incompatible cultures and you deem them as being equal to your own culture, which is based in freedom and democracy and truth, instead of barbaric dictatorships or caliphates, you have a serious problem on your hands at that point. But we didn't see that coming because in the West, we were so engrossed in this idea of equality of all peoples that we fail to understand that, again, not all cultures are equal, right? Some are worse than others. There's child rape practiced in some cultures, and that's deemed as acceptable in those cultures. It's not just the Islamist countries, by the way. It's many, many different types of cultures that value strange sort of things like this. Or, it doesn't have to even necessarily be something that bad. Many of them hold very superstitious beliefs, right? In witchcraft and so forth. And in that regard, those backwards types of incompatible beliefs clash with the West's values and our understanding, which is based on logic and rationality and truth and science. So we, we look to those things in the West to a greater degree, I would argue. And these countries where many of the people that are part of the population are illiterate, don't. Right? Now, is that the fault of the West? Well, not exactly, no. What did happen, though, is that uh, cultural development in different countries proceeded at different rates. And the populations of those countries, I've kind of touched on this a little bit in previous videos, but the populations in many countries didn't value education, didn't value rationality, didn't value logic. They didn't go through an enlightenment process as Europe did. So they're still in their infancy in terms of their capacity to grasp 
complex ideas, right? I'm not suggesting that all people in those societies again, right? But I'm saying, in general, the normative views that are held in those societies are rather backwards, okay? So, when you come up against that, you, you end up with a culture war, and you end up having brought it on yourself, because those people won't, will not accept your values, they simply won't. And especially if it's based on a religious ideology, as is the case with Islamists, right? They simply will not accept Western values as being uh, honourable because they hold their own cultural values. And because the EU set out the fact that they don't have to assimilate, well, again, why should they, right? If the person that you invite into your home doesn't know that you have ground rules, or you've, you've just thrown caution to the wind when it comes to your own ground rules. They're, they might want to trash your entire apartment. And you can hardly blame them for doing that, even though it is actually wrong from a moral standpoint, but you can hardly blame them for doing that if you haven't set down the basic fundamental rules, or if you don't share the same views on what is acceptable and what is not. You see? So... The Barcelona Declaration, I think, is primarily responsible for this chaotic situation that we find ourselves in in Europe. And I don't think it's going to improve anytime soon because of that, uh, be unless we start really reforming the European Union, or the European Union starts reforming itself. And that doesn't seem likely because... Britain is exiting the EU. The EU is likely to go into meltdown if France exits, which it looks like Frexit is, is going to happen. And then you'll see a, a series of other countries do the same thing, and the European Union will collapse anyway. But before it does, you will see the fact that its actions have contributed to mass damage to the societies and the cultures that were already there. To illustrate this point a little bit, if you were to ask, like, let, let me give you this personal example, right? I come from an immigrant family. I'm an immigrant, okay? And if you ask immigrants that are settled in that country what they think of uncontrolled migration, they'll tell you that it's a problem. They don't want uncontrolled immigration into countries. I don't want uncontrolled immigration into countries, right? Because it poses a risk to the people that are already attempting to assimilate uh, into those countries. Assimilation is a very difficult process, by the way, because you first have to learn the language. And in many of these cases, as I said, uh, most of these people are illiterate, not in, in just Western terms, but they are actually incapable of reading or writing their own language. That's how bad it is in many cases. So when you've got people like myself or others that have been in a country for a prolonged period of time who have completely integrated into it, there, there, there's a problem when we come up against people who hold backwards values, perhaps dating back to 1400 years ago, as is the case with Islamist uh, ideologies, or uh, older even in the case of uh, certain other countries, perhaps in Africa, perhaps in uh, certain other Aboriginal tribes or what have you, right? Now, again, not all cultures are equal. Some cultures are better than other cultures, even among that diverse group of countries. So, for example, Jains, right, Jainism, as is practiced in India, you're hardly likely to get too many problems with people who are Jainists or Hindus in general or, um, you know, the, uh, Buddhists, right? Buddhists aren't going to come into your country and attempt to rape, kill and murder. They're just not going to do that. Right, because their values are surprisingly in, in all these groups that we've uh, touched on. Those groups, the the Hindus, the Jains, the the Buddhists, 
are very very compatible with the vest with with the west's values right so it would be silly to say that those people can't or won't integrate it just takes them time but even they will be terrified once they do start the assimilation process of these incoming um hordes as it were as is the case with uncontrolled immigration right so this is why it's a problem assimilation isn't easy in the first instance because you're already having to learn a new culture a new language a new you're forming a new identity fundamentally uh, trying to fit in to the uh, social groupings within that country already right but there's an added pressure then if you get uncontrolled immigration from countries that hold those kinds of backwards values that we spoke about and the backlash that's seen by the communities that are already there from the indigenous populations even towards them threatens their stability right my point in all of this basically i guess is that uh, this declaration wasn't thought through fully or properly by the people who adopted it or the people that proposed it or it was thought through properly and they knew damn well what the consequences would be but that would entail those people the the diplomats in the European Union that drew this agreement up having some very very nefarious um beliefs and ideals so that is a possibility but engaging in anything without thinking it through fully is where the danger lies and in the case of the barcelona declaration that is where the danger lay is they didn't think it through they didn't understand this wasn't based on any scientific hard facts it was just a a quick and easy way of attempting to run before they could walk uh because again countries take time to develop as well don't forget so those countries that didn't get a chance to develop up to that level to have a sort of enlightenment period as it were to develop beyond where they are well you you can't have agreements between two people that aren't equals in any way shape or form that don't share the same values that don't share the same ideals that don't hold rationality as being necessary uh that it doesn't work and that's why we're seeing this collapse because uh, these sorts of uh goals were pursued by the European Union but i'll i'll leave it there for this video on the barcelona declaration anyway it's it's just something interesting to think about in terms of what these people were after what did they want why did they construct this thing uh was it pure ineptitude was it because they had some nefarious agenda i'll leave that up to you to decide but i do think it's necessary to be aware of these things Uh, because none none of the people that are alive today have a full understanding of what was happening inside the European Union because the the European Union conducts its business behind closed doors and it had no oversight and it answered to no one the eurocrats the european bureaucrats didn't care anyway we'll leave it there Thank you very much for watching and take good care of yourselves and we will speak again soon. God bless you.